What's going on YouTube? Welcome to today's video. What I'm going to break down in today's video is the FBA shipping plan. It's time to ship your products to the Amazon warehouse. Congratulations on getting this far. Uh, you can do the shipping plan, entering your box, your carton, your product size, dimensions, packaging requirements in different stages or at different stages uh, of ordering your product. And it's time to ship the product to the Amazon warehouse. So today I want to give you a step-by-step -step tutorial. This will be a great all-in-one step-by-step easy guide on the FBA shipping plan. How do you get this done? Where do you go in your seller central account to enter this shipping plan? What will you need from your supplier or freight forwarder or both to complete the shipping plan? I'm going to walk you through it step-by-step. Welcome to the channel. If you're new, welcome back to those of you, my subscribers. My name is Brian Noonan. I'm a full-time Amazon FBA seller and mentor and business coach right here on my YouTube channel. I'm dedicated to bringing you guys new weekly videos covering everything e-commerce, Amazon FBA, business and personal development. If you enjoy that type of content, please do me a favor right now, head on down and press subscribe. Uh, give me a like on this video. I can see each and every one of you who take just a moment to subscribe and I appreciate each of you. My job right here on this channel is to help educate, teach, impact as many lives as possible, sharing my story of how I went from a struggling, uh, broke drug addict all the way to owning multiple six-figure online businesses. Without any other delays, guys, let's jump inside my computer so I can walk you through entering your FBA shipping plan and shipping to Amazon coming up right now. All right, guys. Well, welcome inside my computer. What we're going to be going over is the FBA shipping plan. So the uh, inside Amazon Seller Central, the actual shipping plan steps uh, and how you enter a shipping plan have changed. So this is going to be a totally updated video, this new kind of shipment workflow for entering brand new FBA shipments, new enter, uh, entering new shipping plans has changed a little bit. So let me guide you through and kind of go over uh, exactly what you'll need and how to figure out how to get your shipping plan entered. So basically to start off with, what are the things we need to be able to complete the FBA shipping plan and when should you do the shipping plan? I recommend doing the shipping plan towards the end of production, uh, right maybe before, about a week before your product is going to be done being manufactured, uh, or maybe even the products are already done and packaged and you're just waiting on the inspection to go there, inspection company to go there and finalize your inspection. That's going to be a good time to go ahead and set up this FBA shipping plan. So towards the end of production or at the end of production or as soon as you have this information, what you will need uh, from your manufacturer to be able to do the shipping plan is the full name and address of your manufacturer. So full name and address of your manufacturer or your freight forwarder, whoever is handling your DDP shipping, whether that's your uh, supplier, if you're paying them for DDP, full door-to-door -door delivery shipping, or if you're using a freight forwarder, you'll want to use the ship ship from address of one of those two people who's ever handling your DDP shipping. So full name and address of the manufacturer or the freight forwarder, whoever's handling DDP, uh, how many units total you're shipping. So uh, let, we'll talk about limits here in a minute and inventory storage limits and restrictions in here in just a minute. I'll show you how to check for that. But you'll need to know how many units are you sending to the Amazon warehouse. The 200 unit limit has been lifted. There's no more 200 unit per ace in limits. So I'll share you, I'll share uh, exactly how to check uh, that in just a minute. And so how many units you're shipping. And then the next things we will need to know is how many total shipping cartons or big shipping boxes you have. Are you they using any pallets? For the majority of you, you're probably just going to have cases or cartons, master shipping cartons, meaning your supplier, you may be sending 300 units to Amazon or 500 units directly to Amazon. You have like 10 or 20 units per uh, a carton or case and you have like 20 or 40 cartons or big master shipping cartons. So how many units total? How many shipping cases or cartons or master shipping cartons are there? And how many units are per carton or master shipping carton are there? And then the total size and weight of both one product, total size and weight, that's weight and dimensions in inches or centimeters of one product. I would get it in inches, uh, what's the dimensions and, and weight of one product in its packaging box, and what's the total size and weight, dimensions and weight of all those shipping cartons. So you'll get this information, how many units total, how many master shipping cartons or cases, boxes are there, units per carton, case or box, 
and the total size and weight of one unit and of all those shipping cartons. You'll get that information from your supplier in most cases. When it's time, when you have that information, we're gonna go inside your seller account and what before we jump into the step-by-step uh, -step how to enter the shipping plan, I wanted you, uh, to show you guys how you'll check your inventory and storage limits. Uh, we, were, we were faced uh, with 200 units per ASIN for all new sellers launching new products. You were only able to send in 200 for the last uh, about six months to a year now. They have list lifted that, and so you are able to send closer to like a 1,000 units again. Um, but here's how you check. Log into your Seller Central account. Go to Inventory, Manage Inventory. On the top, there's probably right here for you, going to be Shipping Queue. Mine's right here. You'll open Shipping Queue. And then it'll look like this, uh, any open shipping plans you have, these are all closed or maybe you have none. Uh, then if you scroll down to the bottom left, you'll see a green little check mark, restock limits, storage limits. Now this is an example seller account that I have set up for demonstration purposes. And you can see here restock limits, maximum inventory level for standard size storage is uh, 999. Okay, I'm able to send in another 999 units of a, a standard size product. Oversize, it's at 1,000. Apparel and footwear, also 1,000. Storage volume, current storage limit, 200 cubic meters. Current space taking up, check there. Okay, so this is saying you, I can send 999 units. Now, I don't recommend sending all of that amount uh, for your first shipment. You're probably buying anywhere from 200 to 500 units for your first order, which is a good starting test order. 200 is a little bit light in case the product sells really quickly. So 300 to 500 is kind of what I recommend for your first order and kind of for your first shipment to Amazon, 300 to 500. If you're ordering more than that, or if you are ordering 500, you may wanna consider sending only 300 to Amazon and the other 200 to a 3PL, just to see how the product sells, because if the product sells slowly, uh, now you've kind of blocked your chances. If your limits get dropped, you will, you already have the majority of your inventory taken up, your space, by that one ASIN you already sent in. So it makes it a little bit more challenging when it comes time to launch a new product if your product sells slowly. But for the majority of you who follow my other videos on the channel uh, and watch my other product research videos, you guys know how to find amazing products. So I don't think your product will sell slow, uh, but just consider that. It's another benefit of setting up a 3PL to store another 200 or 300 units is if you decide to sell on your own Shopify store on walmart.com, you can use that 3PL to sell there. Or if you wanna to switch to FBM, while your FBA inventory runs out, you can switch the listing over to FBM, Fulfillment by Merchant, and you will have your 3PL fulfill those FBM orders, meaning uh, when the customer buys your product on Amazon, you have to ship it to the customer through your 3PL or from your house. So there are some benefits of setting up a 3PL. Those are the advantages. The disadvantages, guys, are uh, you have to pay storage there, and it can be a little bit expensive, but less though less so than Amazon. Uh, another uh, disadvantage is you have to pay, again, shipping when it's time to ship those 200 or 300 units from the 3PL into Amazon. You'll have to uh, pay shipping there. If you do use the 3PL and it's time to create a shipping plan for going from either your house or your 3PL to Amazon, today's uh, shipping plan, it would be a little bit different than what I'm gonna be teaching today. This is for if you're shipping from your manufacturer over in China or your freight forwarder over in China is handling this shipment. That's kind of what I'm gonna be walking you guys through today as far as entering your shipping plan. If you are shipping from your house or your 3PL, the ship from address would be that. And then I'd recommend small parcel delivery and I'd recommend the UPS partnered carrier shipping program right through your Seller Central account, you can buy that discounted shipping. Back into uh, the Manage Inventory tab, on the listing that you want to send more inventory in, uh, you'll, man you'll go over to your Seller account and you will go to your Inventory Manage Inventory page. And then on the uh, listing that you need to send more inventory to, on the right hand side, you're gonna click the down arrow and go to Send Replenish Inventory. 
Then it's going to open up a page like this, send to Amazon. Welcome to the new send to Amazon shipment creation workflow. This is the part that's been totally updated, guys. This looks a lot different. So this is a very, very current video. So you guys are getting in uh, on a new video. So uh, SKU, select from list. Uh, so we, we selected the product down below. Uh, now, here you want to do ship from address. Uh, ship from another address. You probably will have nothing here. So it'll say add address. You want to click on add address. Here, this is where you're going to uh, enter your country region, China, or wherever your uh, supplier is located. The, the full supplier's name, including LTD Co., that will go there in company name. Full name will be the, uh, well, company name and full name can be the uh, supplier's address, okay? Or this company name, you can put yours. So this would be mine. And then for the, um, full name, you can put the manufacturer's full name or the freight forwarder's full name. You'll need their street address. You'll need their city, the district they're in, the state, Providence. It's actually called Providence in China. So you'll need city, district, Providence, the zip code, their phone number, or you can put your phone number there. And then email address, uh, you can put your own email address there. And then add contact and then confirm that you've got this all entered correctly. So China, your company name, the full name of your manufacturer here, their street address. Uh, if it's longer, you'll put the rest of it right here. Uh, the city, the district, the Providence, the zip code, your phone number, and your email address. And then confirm. Uh, marketplace destination is United States. We're shipping to the United States. Then we're going to come down here to your product. And this is the product I'm sending more inventory in. Uh, prep and labeling details needed. How many units are you units per box are there? I entered there's 20 units per box. I'm sending 200 units total. Uh, I put how many units per box? There's 20. Number of boxes 10. Now you see a little green check mark. It says ready to send. Okay, so that means I'm shipping 200 units. I have 20 cartons. No, sorry, I have 10 cartons or boxes or cases. I have 10 cartons or cases or boxes, master shipping cartons, 10, and I have 20 units per carton. That's gonna equal 200 units that I'm sending. Uh, and then you can see down here, confirm and continue. Uh, total prep and labeling fees is zero. And you can pay Amazon to put on your FN SKU on your product. This is what an FN SKU, guys, looks like. Uh, you'll need to send this to your supplier. What this FN SKU is, it's a little sticker label. And I'll show you where you get this in here. You can also get this on the right-hand side of the listing, print item labels. This is your FN SKU, or you can get it, um, or you can get it during the shipping plan. So barcodes, the most important barcode here guys is the FN SKU. This, uh, this FN SKU barcode goes on each unit. This little barcode needs to go on each product's box. This is what Amazon's gonna take your product out of the carton and scan to make sure that they check it into your inventory as you, the seller. So one FN SKU needs to go on each unit. Now I have another video that I can link up above that goes over how to customize this FN SKU. What I normally do is add my made in China right here on the top of this white space. And then if I have any uh, suffocate, if I need a suffocation warning label. So if you have um, a poly bag, a plastic bag that has an opening of six inches or larger that a, 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 ch a, a child could put their head in, you'll want to add the suffocation warning label either directly onto the bag, the poly bag itself printed, uh, or you can put it here too. So made in China and the FN SKU can go right on the FN SKU because each unit will need or each product box will need the FN SKU made in China and if you're using any plastic poly bags with a six inches or larger opening a child could get their head in you'll need a suffocation warning label printed right on the bag or on this sticker because if your product doesn't come in a box it just comes in a poly bag or plastic bag you'll just sticker this FN SKU with made in China here on the top and the suffocation warning label you'll just need to put that one sticker this one sticker it'll be a little larger than this one right on that poly bag and then you're ready to go and then it'll go into some bigger boxes uh like i have 10 boxes of 20 units so uh, packaging requirements guys each unit each product will need to be individually packaged in one box or one uh, poly bag 
if you're bundling different items to create one unique set of, let's say, a ski hat, uh, like a, a like a ski cap or a, a hat, snow, you know, for the snow, snow skiing, you're, you're shipping a hat, you're selling a hat and gloves together, that's your product. You need to make sure that the hat and gloves are in one box or one bag individually packaged with one FN SKU. This is going to be the same FN SKU with the Made in China on every single bag or box that you're sending into Amazon. You wouldn't be able to, if you're selling hats with gloves, you can't send the gloves in one box, the hat in another box, and expect Amazon to go get both pieces to put them together and then ship it to the customer. Before you ship the products into Amazon, they need to be individually packaged, ready to ship individually to the customer and their order, okay? So that's where you're gonna print your item labels. Uh, here, ship date, once you get here. Now, I, uh, you notice that I was jumped kinda to the step two. Under step one, or even before the step one, it will probably ask you, since my information was already saved in here for my product information, I will include this step-by-step -step guide down below. Um, we are choosing uh, we are choosing either individually packaged or case packaged. I would it's usually going to be case packaged. I have ten uh, I have ten uh, cartons and uh, twenty units per carton. So that's an even amount of cartons and units per carton. But if you had let's say eight boxes with eight units and two boxes or cartons with 10 units, see now it's uneven, You well then you'll need to choose individually packaged because they're not all identical, same number of units per box, same number of boxes. Uh, if you have eight boxes of eight units and two boxes of 10 units, go ahead and choose individually packaged. Uh, and then I'll, I'll include this down here. The next thing I was going to mention, guys, is you'll probably need to enter the size and weight of the product in the original manufacturer's packaging. This is for one product, not one box. So when it says, please enter the size and weight of your product in the original manufacturer's packaging, this will be for one product uh, in a box or a poly bag. The dimensions of that and the weight, not a whole case with 10 units in it, okay? Uh, and then down here, uh, we're gonna go over this, so it'll be small parcel. Also, it'll say product eligible for manufacturer barcode tracking. You can actually just uh, uh, ignore that, okay? So ship from date. Uh, estimate the date you expect the shipping carrier to go to your manufacturer and pick up your goods or the date estimate you expect your freight forwarder to ship the product. So here, I'm just gonna put like one week out, let's say, and that's when my uh, freight forwarder is going to the factory or when my supplier is sending the product out. Uh, it's gonna be small parcel delivery, guys. Unless you have pallets, then you'll wanna go LTL, less than truckloads. You can see right here it says ship to address FTW1. That's the Dallas, Texas address. If you got three different ship to locations, like three different warehouses, that's gonna jack up your shipping rates and make it expensive. So what I recommend doing in that case is going to the top right, settings, down to fulfillment by Amazon. Then under inbound settings, you can see inventory placement option. You're gonna to wanna to click edit on the right. And then right here, inventory placement service. You're gonna to wanna to check this little circle and save. Now that will make it so you only have to ship to one warehouse on every single shipment, okay? So that'll make it much better. You do pay Amazon an inventory placement fee of roughly $100 to $350, but usually, guys, that's gonna be a lot cheaper than having to ship to three different warehouses, okay? Uh, and we have here, we have shipment number one, it's going to Dallas, select UPS partnered carrier. Uh, we have small parcel. Uh, I'm just going to do this so that uh, it will kind of change, uh, you know, the, the information so I can enter more information to show you guys as a example. Confirm shipping address. And so small parcel, small parcel delivery, you'll probably have to in the beginning enter your product's size and weight in the original manufacturer packaging. Here you can see the shipment name, the shipment ID, the uh, FTW1 Dallas, Texas is going to. I have number of boxes 10. I have 20 units per box. That's 200 units I'm shipping of one SKU or one product ASIN. Then you're just gonna do print box labels, print. So we have that FN SKU that goes on each unit. And then the only other barcode you guys need is this one right here. 
This is your FBA box or carton labels. This will get sent to your supplier or freight forwarder. Whoever is labeling your products, you'll send this to them. Usually I have my supplier put one of these. They'll cut out one uh, here. One of these goes on each uh, carton, okay? Uh, and there was an uh, example here. So you have, I have 10 uh, boxes or 10 cartons. Uh, you can now put your box labels uh, and, and start uh, packaging your pallets. Pallet labels will need to be confirmed on the ne next step. But most of you guys will have this right here, cartons or boxes. You can now put your at this FBA uh, box label, one on each unit. Now, if you are shipping from your uh, house or 3PL into Amazon, obviously the ship from address is no longer your supplier or freight forwarder. Now it's the 3PL location or your house location address. That's your new ship from address. You'll enter the same thing, number of uh, boxes, number of units per box. Uh, it'll tell you which warehouse to ship to. And then up here where there was um, partnered carrier, you would want to do partnered carrier, okay? You can see I have a $120 placement fee uh, to not have to ship to three warehouses. But again, that's going to be cheaper than shipping to three warehouses. Uh, so in, that's inventory placement service. But if you were shipping from your 3PL, your house into Amazon, uh, that will be Amazon partnered carrier shipping, small parcel delivery. That was going to be your cheapest. Okay, so now you've got the F and SKU goes on each unit with the made in China and the suffocation warning label if you have any poly bags. Now you have this barcode as well. I have 10 of these because I have 10 uh, cartons or 10 cases. And this goes one on each carton or case. Okay, so you'll print those and then continue to carrier and pallet information. If you have pallets, how many pallets will you be shipping? You can put 10 uh, and then print pallet labels. Then you can send those to your supplier or freight forwarder if you're using pallets, okay? Uh, Non-partnered carrier, uh, you can just do other right there. And then you can see here, total estimated prep labeling and shipping fees, zero. I don't pay Amazon 40 cents or 30 cents to put the FNC barcode on each unit. I have my supplier do that because it's the cheapest. And then guys, you're just going to uh, confirm right down here and you've just created your shipping plan successfully. Let me know if you guys have any questions down below about the FNC, about the ship from address, about the partnered carrier, or any other questions you have for me. Feel free to leave those down below in the comment section about this new workflow a new layout for the shipping plan. And I will also make sure to link this document down below uh, that kind of goes through each of the steps we just did, all right? Thank you guys so much for watching today's video, FBA shipping plan. Great job getting it entered. Now you're ready to just sit back, finalize your listing, send the barcodes to your supplier or freight forwarder, and get your listing ready to go for launch. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I'll see you on the next video.